Hey everybody, welcome back to Chipstock Investor. You may notice that we've switched up our background a bit. It's not Chipstock Investor Roadshow, but we're trying a little something different. Yeah, uh, sorry for my equipment technical difficulties in recent videos. Hopefully this has cleaned things up and done the trick. Today, we're gonna to focus on something that we talked about briefly during an update we did on our small cap companies, specifically on Skywater Technology. And we mentioned a purchase of a piece of equipment from a company called Multibeam. Multibeam is a company started by Dr. David Lamb. You may recognize that name. He's the gentleman that also started Lamb Research. We're gonna talk about what electron beam lithography is, how that functions in the semiconductor manufacturing process and how you can invest in it. So to introduce what e-beam lithography is, we thought we'd first explain, maybe recap what photolithography is. And when talking about photolithography, of course, we need to talk about ASML, the company that has what some call a monopoly in ultraviolet photolithography equipment. We have a couple of videos here that explain how ultraviolet light is created. The first link is from a company called Symer. This is an older video, but Symer was the company that ASML actually acquired over a decade ago for about two and a half billion dollars that really helped them pave the way to creating extreme ultraviolet light. Second video is a bit of an update from ASML itself. Put simply, they use a CO2 laser shot through a droplet of tin to create a high energy beam of ultraviolet light. You may recognize this chart from your old physics classes on the right-hand side beyond the, the red part of the visible part of the electromagnetic spectrum. We have the invisible infrared light, but on the left-hand side beyond violet, we have increasingly shorter wavelengths that's ultraviolet light, also invisible to the human eye. But these increasingly shorter wavelengths to create extreme ultraviolet light is what ASML is using with its, its latest EUV machines to create smaller, more energy efficient and higher performant features on the most advanced chips, like for example, NVIDIA's AI chip systems. So this extreme ultraviolet light, these little packets of light, these photons, are focused down into very small nanometer dimension features using a series of mirrors. And ultimately that light gets shown through a photo mask and that photo mask blocks out part of the light, allows some of the light through. And that's what creates the features on the wafer, which eventually gets cut up into chips. And now we have the high in a EUV machine. That is the most advanced equipment from ASML. This machine enables the semiconductor size to be shrunken down, those features to become even more smaller and the transistor density to increase. This machine was first purchased by Intel. They've taken possession of it and other companies like Samsung and Taiwan Semiconductor will soon have their hands on it. This newest machine costs up to 400 million US dollars. So obviously with that kind of price tag, 400 million bucks, that is prohibitively expensive for most semiconductor manufacturers, with the exception of uh, the, the most advanced chip makers like Casey just mentioned. There is actually another bottleneck in this manufacturing process though, and that is the photo mask itself. So after a, a team of engineers designs a new chip using EDA software from Synopsys or Cadence, that design then gets taken by a photo mask manufacturer so again, here a picture of one of those. This is from a uh, photo mask manufacturer, Toppen. And these things are also quite expensive depending on the size of the shapes on the chips. The smaller the shape, the, the denser the transistors, the more complex the photo mask, the more expensive the photo mask will ultimately be. And it also can take many weeks for these things to be completely finished and ready for the fab like Intel or TSMC to actually put to use. And this is the process that we're talking about right in the middle, those steps one through four, deposition, lithography, etch and clean. Deposition is where that photoresist gets laid down. Lithography, of course, that's when the light gets shown through those photo masks and it creates the features on to the wafer. Etch is when some of that photoresist is etched away and it, a little city is created onto the wafer and then clean, cleaning that silicon wafer 
up so that it works. This process can be done multiple times. And that's an important point because that process can be repeated multiple times and each process step could use a different photo mask. Here's some of the features that are being created with that newest high NA EUV machine. ASML has a partnership with IMEC. Uh, we discussed uh, this slide about a month ago in our last video on ASML. These very, very tiny features, just a few nanometers in dimension. It's a very complex process. And again, multiple bottlenecks in this. The machine itself, hundreds of millions of dollars each, and the photo masks themselves take a lot of time to manufacture, and you might need multiple photo masks as well for each process step. It takes a lot of time for these things to get cranked out of a photo mask manufacturer. But we promised you that we would discuss what an electron beam or E-beam actually is. Most commonly, it's used in metrology, measuring stuff, and process diagnostic and control. Instead of using an optical metrology device to find defects, e-beam metrology detects the scattering of electrons when they make contact with the wafer to measure the surface shapes and dimensions. If you work in some sort of field of research, you might have experience using an electron microscope. This makes use of e-beam technology. This uh, beam of electrons fired onto an object and because electrons are so small, it can detect very, very tiny features and you can zoom in and get a very close up view of what is actually going on down there at the atomic level. Now, Casey, we, we talk about this because ASML, everybody knows, is the leader in photolithography. But on this chart, there's always this little purple sliver there over on PDC and metrology. What is ASML doing over there alongside KLA Core? and applied materials? That's a great question. We have focused a lot on KLA Corp and applied materials in specifically this part of the semiconductor manufacturing equipment space, but ASML does have some metrology in their business. In fact, they purchased the company Mapper. Mapper added this e-beam metrology equipment to ASML's already extensive catalog. Here's a picture of some of the e-beam metrology and inspection tools that ASML offers. They also have optical metrology and inspection tools as well. These machines are often installed along with the photolithography machine, the DUV and the EUV machines themselves. Specifically with an e-beam inspection tool, it might be able to zoom in really, really close in on very tiny features of the wafer so that an engineering team can help iron out some of the wrinkles in a new manufacturing process, or maybe with some different e-beam or optical equipment, those can be used with quality control once wafer production ramps up and it, it hits full-scale commercial production for, for one of the manufacturer's customers. You know, they start cranking out lots of wafers and dicing them up into lots of chips. So again, these metrology and inspection tools often installed with the lithography equipment for inspection for quality control. And E-beam, electron beam, is one of the technologies used. E-beams are not only used in metrology, but they can also be used in lithography. E-beam lithography is different than photolithography. So Nick, maybe you can help us understand this a little bit better. So we once again have a couple of YouTube videos. We'll have those linked down in our video description so you can see a visual of what this looks like. E-beam lithography is created when a metal filament is heated up to create a flow of electrons. And then those electrons are accelerated through a vacuum chamber to create that very focused, very small electron beam. And because that electron beam is just nanometers in dimension, when it strikes the wafer surface, it reacts with an electron sensitive resist chemical, like a photo sensitive resist chemical. And then that's where you get those little shapes, microscopic features on the wafer that then get etched away, revealing the dimensions of the what ultimately become the transistors on the chips. Now, there's an important feature about E-beam, and that's because that thing is so small and so precise, you can actually do what's called direct write onto the wafer. Why is that important? Well, it eliminates the need, first of all, for very expensive pieces of equipment from ASML holding. It also means you can direct write 
the shapes, the features onto the chip without a photo mask, which can drastically reduce cost and accelerate the manufacturing time. Why wouldn't everybody use electron beam lithography then? That's a great question. There are a few problems with e-beam lithography. The first is a single e-beam with direct write capability takes far too long for production manufacturing in a semiconductor fab. An e-beam could take up to an entire day's worth of work to trace out those lines onto the wafer. You can imagine one wafer a day would not be very cost efficient. Multiple e-beams suffer from the effects of electromagnetic fields moving the beam of electrons. And then the third and final one, particle to particle interaction can hurt the resolution on wafer patterns. So this is where multi-beam comes in because they have made a couple of technological breakthroughs. They've been making some announcements in tandem with Synopsys. There again, there's our EDA software leader. They've been talking about solving some of these long manufacturing cycle times by using multiple e-beams in one machine and being able to do so while maintaining the very, very high resolution of the features on the wafer. And like Casey mentioned earlier, we touched on this when we talked about Skywater. Skywater took first possession of this new miniature multi-beam system from Dr. David K. Lamb's new business. So multi-beam in partnership with Synopsys, able to make some of these breakthroughs and able to unlock new use cases in the fab for semiconductor engineers. And this brings us back to the mention of Skywater earlier. We discussed this briefly in that video on our small cap stocks. We'll link that video right here and in the description below. Make sure you take a look at that. In July, Skywater announced they took possession of multi-beams piece of equipment. Here's a picture of what that multi-beam system looks like. And then we have a brief video from multi-beam showing what the software looks like when using this piece of equipment. So it sounds like Skywater will primarily be using this machine for prototyping of new chips. And here in the software, you can see an engineering team can input changes into what those multi-beam e-beams are actually writing onto the chip. And this unlocks some new possibilities. So again, these are miniature electron beam columns. So multi-beam was able to solve some of the, the physics challenges with these things. They were able to, to account for some of the uh, electromagnetic field effects that can happen when you have multiple e-beams running in parallel with each other. And they were also able to dial the energy level of those e-beams in such a way that there's no particle damage when the electrons hit the wafer and make sure that the ultimate features that are drawn on the wafer are as intended and to maintain the nice and crisp lines that are needed for high performance chips. This is unique because this multi-beam system is just as it sounds. There's multiple beams able to write independently of one another. So you can have multiple beams writing multiple different designs on each die of the silicon wafer. Yeah, so that helps with the problem of not having enough throughput. Uh, maybe instead of having just one wafer per day, now maybe you can crank out a few wafers per day. And one last unique feature of this is that because these e-beams can write independently of each other, you might actually be able to write different iterations of the same chip all on the same wafer. So again, going back to photolithography, one of the issues with that is you have that photo mask in place. And so each die on the wafer is identical to the one next to it. But with e-beam, you have the ability to independently write different designs all on the same wafer. Again, if you're, if you're thinking about using this to prototype a new chip design, Multi-Beam's new system installed at Skywater could have some real benefits for your company as you try to dial in the right design and the right manufacturing process to get your custom creation ready for commercial use. As we've talked about with Synopsys and Cadence design systems, they typically have an FPGA or a field programmable gate array chip that are used for emulation and prototyping of a new design with the software that they have. But that could also cause some other design challenges. 
such as when you're manufacturing. This software from Cadence Design and Synopsys helps with design challenges, but maybe not necessarily with manufacturing process challenges. This is where this digital writing system from Multibeam may help on the manufacturing floor, making changes quickly. There are some other unique cases that might come up for Multibeam's new uh, miniature e-beam lithography tool. These things can also be used maybe in tandem with photolithography to make some further customizations to chips. There might also be some application in encryption, perhaps with writing some unique uh, features onto the chip used later on with like uh, chip ID. So maybe you have some chips specifically used in security or in encryption of some sort. Perhaps eBeam has some niche application there. So let's cover that final question. How can we invest in eBeam lithography or eBeam tech in general? Well, at this point, the most obvious and easiest way would be from the metrology and process diagnostic and control companies themselves. KLA Core, ASML, and Applied Materials all have electron beam technology used for the inspection and quality control of the manufacturing process. But if we want to invest in e-beam lithography specifically, multi-beam, uh, David K. Lamb's newer business that he started in 2010, that is not a public company yet. And we think that's just as well, actually, because by our estimation, this is probably at best maybe a couple hundred million dollar per year industry for e-beam lithography. However, there are perhaps some indirect ways to bet on multi-beams, e-beam lithography breakthroughs specifically. As we mentioned before, Skywater Technology has purchased one of those machines and will be using it in the future. Skywater Technology is one of the stocks that we hold in our small cap basket. And in addition to that, Synopsys does have that partnership with Multibeam where they are integrating their design software into Multibeam's new tool. So probably a very small part of Synopsys business at this point, but perhaps that will grow over time as well and grow into something that complements the FPGA-based emulation and, and prototyping business. Very cool technology. We're interested to see where this goes. Now you have a little bit of background on what it is, what it does, and how you can invest in it, even in a roundabout way. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and check out our Semiconductor Insider membership below. You can join over on Ko-fi, just five bucks a month, get you access to exclusive content, live Q and A's, and all of our video notes. Make sure you check it out. We'll see you again soon at Chipstock Investor.